Going live in five. Oh, we are live. Hey, everyone. We're live. Hide Music, Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm here with Matt DePietro. Uh, he's going to teach you all there is to know about the horn. Uh, so let's uh, let's get it going. Matt DePietro, all right. Hello and welcome to today's Hyde webinar. Um, today is all about the horn. If you are a horn player and you have a horn with you, have that ready. Um, I'm going to be doing a little demo. I'm going to be doing some playing for you in the first part of this presentation. And then we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you some things. And then we're going to be doing some horn playing together. Um, in the biggest part of what we're doing today. If maybe you're going to be a horn player in the fall or you're a horn player and you don't have your instrument with you, or you thought this was the trombone video and you clicked on it by mistake, whatever, stick around. Um, you're gonna hear and see some pretty cool things, some pretty interesting things, because this is such a great instrument. When I was first starting out on horn, when I was a beginner in elementary school, I knew that horn was an instrument that connected with me. I knew it was a lot of fun to play. I knew that I loved being in band. And that was pretty much all that I knew about it. Um, the more that I worked at it and the further that I got into it, just the more that I really came to appreciate this instrument. And there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of things that I really love about it. But I'm going to talk about two big ones. Um, and then we'll get into that interactive part. The first thing that makes the horn such a great instrument to play, such a great instrument for composers to write for, something that makes this instrument a really big deal in the concert band, a really big deal in the symphony orchestra, is the range of notes that it can play. Uh, when all of us started out um, as very beginners on horn, one of the very first notes that we would have learned is middle C, the C right below the treble clef. Sounds like... And the first handful of notes that any of us play starting out. And if we start on that C and make a full scale, I'm going to play from C, middle C to the C above that. Not a bad range for a beginner. And that range is used a lot. Um, elementary, middle school compositions, things you might play in a concert. That C to C is not all the notes you'll see, but a lot of them. But if I start on that higher C, the C that's on the third space of the treble clef, I can play up to another C above that. <laughs> and that high C is up in the higher part of the trumpet range that is in the range of high woodwind instruments and the horn can play up there composers write um horn solos um features in concert music that go up to that note and so the horn um does a lot of middle range playing has the capabilities of playing um that high but if i go back to my middle C. <laughs> The horn can also go down to another C below that middle C. And that low C, I'm talking about the second space of the bass clef, that's down in trombone and baritone range. They see those, that, that type of note regularly. But wait, there's more. If I start on that C... I play down to low F, which is right below, right below the bass clef. And that's one of the lowest notes uh, that's possible for beginner and intermediate trombone baritone players. That is really into the tuba range. And um, horn students may not see those notes, especially the low ones very often, but composers um, write for those notes. And I've played whether it's up to the high C. Every now and then I'll see that in some concert music or some solo literature. Um, and down to that left, uh, that low F and even lower, um, I perform that note in concerts. One group that is so much fun for me to get to be a part of is a type of ensemble called the horn choir. Nobody's singing, we're all playing horns, but a horn choir is an ensemble made up of entirely, um, it's all horn players. 
sometimes it might be 12 people. I've played in concerts where the stage is filled with just horn players, people playing this instrument, 50 of us, 80 of us. And horn choir music is so exciting to play and it can be so varied because of course the middle harmony parts are covered, but you can have high melodies, you can have featured soloists, you can have the bass parts covered and you don't need different instruments, you don't need anything special. Everybody can do that right on this horn. The other thing um, that I'm going to talk to you about today, just why I love this instrument, one more of the many, many reasons is how versatile, versatile it is and how differently it can play in different styles and kind of moods and feelings. Um, what I'm about to say is true for great orchestra music, great concert band music, great solo music. Um, but a lot of people aren't, aren't super familiar with those things. So if you think about something uh, like movie music, Star Wars specifically, I'm not gonna play any Star Wars today, but if you think about the main Star Wars theme, really features the brass. Horns have some great melody there. It's strong, it's heroic. Horns can play really aggressive, um, something like in the Imperial March in Star Wars. And it might sound something like this. <laughs> But then in, you know, the same movie, the same Star Wars movie or um, a great orchestral horn solo or um, something really subdued and sensitive in concert band music, you're going to hear the horn playing really smoothly um, really reserved, and that sound might be more like this. And the horn can even do so much in between all of that, and you know, every instrument has um, a range of styles and a range of sounds that it can get. But because I'm a horn player and because I'm totally biased, I just think that horn can do it uh, better than the other instruments. And it's so fun to be able to do that and see all those different types and styles of music. If you have a horn with you, um, grab that horn right now. We're not gonna do a lot of playing quite yet, but I wanna double check one big thing with you on your horn and the way that you hold it. Um, if you don't have a horn with you, just take some mental notes um, and think about these the next time that, think about these things the next time that you are playing your horn. If you're a horn player and maybe you're talking to somebody who's not in band, maybe you're talking to a non-musician and you're talking about what you do and you're talking about um, how much you love music and being in band, you tell them that you're a horn player and your friend would say, which, which instrument was that? I thought there were a lot of horns in band. And then you'd reply, well, I play French horn. And your friend says, I, I, I don't know what that instrument is. And you tell them, well, it's the instrument where you, you put your hand in the end of it. And your friend would say, oh yeah, that one. Why didn't you say so? Um, Anybody, anybody in the world knows that flutes play high notes, a trombone has a slide, and horn, for better or worse, is just known as the instrument where we put our hand in it when we play. Um, the things that I'm going to show you are the way that I was taught, the way that I teach my students at school, the way that I teach my private horn students, but if your band teacher likes uh, for you to do it differently or has shown you a different way, your band teacher is the boss, you keep doing what they're saying. But um, if what I'm going over now is something that um, could help you or it makes sense, definitely use this because this is like the, the real way that horn players do it. There's a lot of wrong ways to have your hand in the bell. And even for my, when I'm starting out a brand new beginner, generally, generally, generally they're, they're still pretty young. They have a lot of growing to do. I have them put their hand on the outside of the bell. Some people start with, with it in right away no right or wrong. It's just the way that I do it. So I like the focus to be on just holding and, and sitting the right way. But when you're ready to have your hand in the instrument, a few things to keep in mind. Um, we want to have the shape of our hand slightly cupped. So it's not like stretched back. It's not perfectly straight, but it's slightly cupped. And your fingers should be together. There shouldn't be a gap by your thumb. And if you think of the 
bell of your horn, like the face of a clock, um, where the mouthpiece is, is like 12 o'clock midnight. And your thumb can go about by that 12 o'clock, but we want the back of our hand towards pressing against three o'clock. And so when you're holding it, your hand's on the outside of the bell. Um, and that way you have this big area right here for all of our glorious horn sound to come out. Um, horn's the only instrument that has the bell facing that way. And so we want to make sure our hand isn't getting in the way. We don't have like weird gaps. Your hand's not completely relaxed. Um, and it's not making you sound stuffy or anything. Students who maybe just have never been told about what they should do with their uh, right hand, oftentimes they'll have their hand like this on the, the part of the horn bell closest to them. Pro tip, don't do that. Uh, it doesn't help you in any way. It really doesn't do anything at all. Um, depending on how you're listening to me at home, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this difference, but when I have my hand out of the bell, see if you can hear the difference. Generally, we have our hand in here to give the horn its characteristic dark sound. And whether or not you can hear that on your speakers at home, it's a really big deal to have our hand in the right place so that it's helping us stay in tune. It's giving us that characteristic sound and it's helping our sound um, and kind of softening it and not stopping it from getting out. So right hand position is a big deal for us as horn players. This is the part where we're going to be doing some things together. I'm going to be teaching you some songs that you may already know, but we're going to do them in a different way. Um, so if you haven't picked up your horn yet, grab it now, and we're going to do some playing together. First, a quick history lesson. Um, the ancestor of the trumpet is the bugle. It looks a lot like a trumpet, but it doesn't have any valves. The ancestor of this modern double horn is the natural horn. It had a mouthpiece. It had a bell where all the sound came out. And it had loops of tubing, but it was relatively open in the middle because there were no rotors. There, We didn't have these tuning slides attached to those rotors. And without being able to move our fingers to get, like before you heard me playing different scales, um, so you were missing a lot of those notes. Without rotors, um, this is the, the type of sounds I can get. And there's not a lot of good music that features only those notes. So between the horn being a totally natural horn, um, just playing those open notes and getting its rotors along the way, people put their right hand in the bell and they adjusted their hand to be able to create the notes between those open notes that I was playing before. And that's called hand horn. Um, the, what we're going to be doing to play some familiar songs, we're going to be using hand horn techniques and we're going to play our horn, not like it's a modern uh, rotor horn, but as if, you know, we were playing this hundreds of years ago um, before the rotors were invented. So, when I use my hand to create the notes between the open notes, listen to how different this sounds. Um, listening at home on your device, my volume might be way different on those covered notes, and definitely the sound, the tone of those notes is way different. And that's that was the expect that was the way people expected a horn um, to sound for many, many, many years before these rotors were invented and accepted as the normal way to play horn. So let's play some notes together. We're going to do just a short five note scale um, using C, D, E, F, G. If you've been playing horn, you already know that C, E, and G are open notes. When we play these notes in order, when we get to D, we are going to make um, kind of like a little trap door. And the heel, the bottom part of your hand, is going to be coming across to my what might be like 9 o'clock. If, if we're still thinking of the clock imagery and you can lightly touch the heel of your hand so that we still need the sound to get out, but we're definitely covering that. And you're going to hear that when you do this at home. Um, D 
we're going to lightly cover, just touch the heel of your hand to cover that all up. When we get to F, it's the same kind of motion, but you're going to cover more tightly. Um, listen to these five notes one more time, then we'll do it together. <laughs> All right, so we're starting on C. We're going C, D, E, F, G. C is open, D is covered, E is open, F is tightly covered, and then G is open again. Let's do it together. Two, three, four. And you may have already kind of heard it and felt it that it's so important for you to be listening and adjusting. So if what you're doing, if, it, if you think you're doing the right thing with your hand, but it doesn't sound quite right, adjust what you're doing with your hand. Maybe make it a little bit tighter. And if, if your note's matching mine better, great. You did it the right way. If you make your hand tighter and it sounds worse, then loosen it up a little bit. Let's do those five notes one more time. We'll go C, D, E, F, G, F, E, D, C. And we'll come back down together. Two, three, four. So those are our first five notes. Um, we're going to play my favorite song in the world, which is Hot Cross Buns. And that only uses three notes. You might remember from um, your, your first few weeks of band, we're going we're gonna to use the notes E, D, and C. E is open. D, we're going to close our hand. C is open. Let's just try those three notes. Listen to the three notes, and then we'll do it together. Do those three notes with me. Two, three, four. Now, the first part of Hot Cross Buns is just E, D, C, E, D, C. Let's do that together. Two, three, four. And the next part of the tune is C, 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 D, 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 D. Let's do those eight notes together. Four C's, four D's with our hands closed. And closed for the D's. Two, three, four. Let's take it from the start. E, D, C, E, D, C, 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 D, 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 D. Here's the beginning. Two, three, four. Almost gave away the beginning. And you may know it already. This song ends just like it begins. It ends with E, D, C. So let's add that on to the end of it. Okay, we have our EDC in the beginning, EDC a second time, four C's, four D's, and then we'll end EDC. Let's do it. Two, three, four. That's our first tune on hand horn. That was Hot Cross Buns. Um, the next tune we're going to play is another classic. We're going to play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. This tune uses a range of six notes. So we're going to use the F and the G that we were kind of warming up on. When we did that first scale, we're also going to go up to A. I'm going to play all six notes. And when you're watching at home, it may look like my hand is doing the exact same thing for every closed note. Um, but D, I'm just closing it. F, I'm closing it more tightly. And when I get to A, I'm going to be closing it even less, even more lightly than the D. And you'll hear that when you're doing it at home. You'll feel if it's not quite right. We all know what Twinkle Twinkle Little Star should sound like. And so if your notes aren't matching mine or if it doesn't sound like the melody you expect, keep listening, keep adjusting. Here's the six notes, C, D, E, F, G, A. I'll play them, then we'll do them together. All right, so C is open, D is closed, E is open, F is tightly closed, G is open, A is lightly closed. Let's try all six notes. Two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 
So those are the six notes we're using for this tune. Um, this song starts out with four open notes. C, C, G, G, A, A, lightly closed, and then another G. Listen to it. And actually, you know what? I'll do it twice. If you want to hear it first and play with me the second time, awesome. If you think you can handle it right away, just play it with me twice. Two, three, four. Here's again. Play along if you didn't already. Two, three, four. And the next part is just coming down notes right in order. F, F, E, E, D, D, C. And think about when we were doing that short scale. F is tightly closed, E is open, D is medium closed, C is open. Play those notes with me, starting on F. Or listen to it first. I'll do it twice. Two, three, four. Either play it again or join in with me. Two, three, four. Let's put both of those chunks together. So we're going to play C, C, G, G, A, A, G, and then what we just did. F, F, E, E. D, D, C. I'll play it twice. Two, three, four. And as we're going through this, keep listening, keep adjusting. The next chunk of this tune is G, G, F, F, E, E, D two times okay so i'm going to be playing g g f f e e d twice and that's the middle portion of the song let's try it two three four Just the middle chunk, starting on G. Two, three, four. Okay, let's put it all together from the beginning. C, C, G, G, A, A, G, F, F, E, E. D, D, C. And then the part that we just played. Here's our start. Two, and I'll do it twice. So if you want to hear it all together um, or join in twice, here I go the first time. Two, three, four. <laughs> is exactly like the beginning. They just copied and pasted the start of it, and then they put it at the end. So the end is just the way we start. C, C, G, G, A, A, G, F, F, E, E, D, D, C. Let's see if we can, if we can put the whole thing together. So whether you want to hear it, whether you think you're ready to just jump in, I'll play the whole tune twice. Um, and you can play both times or one time. Here I go from the very start. Two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
that's what the tune sounds like in its entirety. I'll do it one more time. Jump in and play it with me if you haven't already. Two, three, four. today um it's going to use one more one new hand position um use another note that you probably know we just haven't used in any of our tunes yet today um i've heard this tune with like a bunch of different titles but um i usually just think of it as go team go and the whole thing i'll give you a little sneak peek since it's maybe not quite as common as hot cross buns or um twinkle twinkle little star this is what we're going to be playing together so for this tune, we're going to be using C, E, F, F sharp, then G. F sharp is even less closed than A was in Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So however you were playing that A to make the tune sound right, to match what I was playing, F sharp's gonna be closed even less. And really when I play this note, the heel of my hand, the bottom of the palm, isn't even fully touching the metal where nine o'clock is. Um, there's just a tiny little bit of, of space where the sound in the air is coming out. And that's for my horn, my hand shape, that's what I'm doing to get that F sharp sound. Let's play the, the first few notes together just one at a time. So we're gonna play C open, E open, F tightly closed, F sharp lightly closed, and then open for G. Let's just do it one at a time. Two, three, four. <laughs> song um i just think it's more fun i think it sounds cooler to not articulate the g don't tap your tongue to start the g we're gonna go f sharp and slide by opening our hand we're gonna slide right in from f sharp right into g so it sounds like all right let's do that together in rhythm now two three four oh, do that one more time i missed the e two three four all right, one more time. Two, three, four. And this song is actually what we just played, but three times in a row. All right, so um, listen once or just join in right with me right now doing that. <clears throat> Starting on C, three in a row. Two, three, four. All right, one more time. Play with me if you haven't already. Two, three, four. And then the next part is three high C's no fingers needed, and then three low Cs. And I like to play the three high, sleeves, uh, three high Cs and slide my lips right down to the low Cs. Do that with me, start on the high C. Two, three, four. One more time. Two, three, four. So let's add that on to the end of the C, E, F, F sharp G. Two, three, four. Now 
Now this tune, the part of it at least that we're going to play today is just exactly what we played two times in a row. All right? So I'll do that twice. From the start. Two, three, four. <laughs> If you didn't play it, that whole thing with me yet, let's do that together. Um, and that will be the end of this horn webinar for today. So let's play through this whole uh, third and final song, and then we're out. Two, three, four. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. That's awesome. And as always, uh, join us back here every Tuesday and Thursday throughout all of the 2020 summer uh, for Hyde Music Live. Thanks again for joining us, everyone.